Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to use the StatsBomb API to get free data. StatsBomb has provided some great open data which you can either use the API or as well you can download it and load it up from a JSON format. I preferably like to use the API. It's a lot simpler, it's a lot easier, and it makes it a lot quicker to access. So this is only for accessing the open data that they've provided. It is not for accessing any sort of thing with credentials or if you're paying for stats bomb data. So there's only gonna be a tutorial on how to install the API and then as well how to use it to load in event data. But that's a quick little intro. So I'm just gonna take you over to the stats bomb documentation, kind of show you that a little bit and then we'll jump into a Jupyter Notebook and I'll show you how to load in the event data for one of the matches that they provide. So let's jump into it. All right, so we are going to start in the StatsBomb Pi documentation. And the first thing that this recommends we do is that we run pip install StatsBomb Pi to install the actual Python package on our computer so that we can access the API. And it says right here, API access is for paying customers only, but we can still use it to access all of the open data that StatsBomb Pi allows us to access. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run pip install StatsBomb Pi like this in your command line or in your terminal. And then you are just, it's gonna install everything that you need. And then we'll be able to use this API to access all of the open data. So really that we're not having to load it all in manually, which is kind of a pain because of the way that it's all set up with match IDs and competition IDs. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna head over to a Jupyter Notebook and I'm just gonna show you how you can kind of use it and get event ID for all of their open data. So we're just gonna import the actual package. We're gonna say from stats bomb pi import SB. We run that, it'll load in. So the way stats bomb has everything set up is they have the their data set up so that it has on the top level kind of a competition ID and a season ID. And then within those competitions and seasons, there are match IDs, which you can pull all of the matches from a certain season of a certain competition. And then inside of each one of those matches, there are there is event data, essentially, where we can pull all of the event data and get kind of like the X and Y locations and all the different actions that are going on in the stats bomb data, essentially in all the matches. So what we're gonna do first is we are just going to look at all of the competitions. So we'll say sb.competitions and with parentheses and we will run it. And what this does is it tells us the competition ID and the season ID for the competition and then what year it took place. So for example, you can see competition ID corresponds with the competition name of the Champions League and then season ID four corresponds with 2018-19 season. And then as well, we can come down here and we can see 37 is the competition ID for the FA Women's Super League and then 42 was for the 1920 season. So what we're gonna do is we are going to look at the World Cup. So that has a competition ID right here of 43 and then a season ID of three. So what we can do now is we can just kind of scroll down to a new cell and we can look at all of the matches that are in the World Cup and get their match IDs so then we can access the event data. So what we'll do is we'll just say sb.matches and then we need to pass in two arguments. We need to pass in the competition ID, which was 43. And then we need to pass in the season ID, which was three. So we'll say season underscore ID, set that equal to three. Run that, and it's not competitions ID, it's competition ID. Another typo, who would have thought? So now what this does is it gives us all of the matches, the results, the teams, and then as well, it gives us the match ID. So essentially what we can do is we can now use this match ID to get all of the event ID. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this Belgium England game right here. And we are going to look at the event data. So we're gonna say events equals sb.events. 
And then on the inside of this print, these parentheses, we are going to pass in the argument match ID. So match underscore ID equals this match ID right here, eight, six, five, seven. So we'll run that. And once it gives you the number for confirming it has ran, I'm gonna run a couple more cells. Okay, so it's ran. And now what we can do is we can just look at this data. So if we say events dot head, it's gonna give us the top five rows. And in the top five rows, we can see we have five rows here and 77 columns, but essentially it gives us all the columns. They're blocked out because there's 77 of them. And then it gives us just all of the data. So it starts with just the announcing the starting 11, and then it says half start for both teams. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to filter this data so that we can get just the columns that we want. So most of the time, unless you're building like a complex type of system or algorithm, you probably aren't gonna care about probably 80, 90% of these columns. So what we're gonna do is just fill, I'll show you how to filter this out so you can get the columns that you want to kind of look at what you actually want. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to look at the England team. So first let's look at all the column names. So we'll say events dot columns. And if we do that like this, oops, without that. So if we do that, then we can see all of the column names. And so we're just going to want to pick out the column names that we actually want to see. So what we're going to do is we're going to say events equals events. And then inside of two brackets, we'll pass in all of the column names. So essentially we're saying events data frame, and then we're going to pass in a list of columns. So we'll pass in, we want to know the team right here. So we'll say team, you can just copy and paste it, or you can type it in. Then we'll hit comma on the outside of those, some more um, apostrophe quotations. And then we also wanna know the type because we wanna look at like if it was a pass, if it was a shot, so we'll say type. And then as well, we wanna look at the minute that it happened. And then we will look at the location. So location is gonna give you your X and Y values. And then as well, we're going to look at the pass, because we're gonna look at just passes, we're gonna say pass underscore end underscore location. So as you can see right here, you can look through all these and pass end location has a certain one right here, pass end location. And then for example, if it was anything else, it would have like goalkeeper end location, or you can even have different things such as like shot end location. So just make sure that you're getting the right things and then the right column names. And then we also wanna know the player that did it. And what we can do is we can hit dot reset underscore index so that we can loop over it later if we want to. And then as well, we wanna only look at England. So we'll say events equals events in brackets again, events. And then we, oops, I gotta spell events right events and then we want to look at the team column and we want to say we want all of the rows where the team is equal to England and we need to put that in parentheses and then we need to do dot reset index again honestly you only need to do it once so just take that out and then put it on the last one that you filter with so then we can do that and now let's look at our data frame now so if we look at events dot head we will look at the top 20 rows this time so now, as you can see, we have the, in, the team, the type, so it was a pass, and then we have the location, so the X and the Y. Then we have the pass end location, which is the end X and Y. And stats bomb data is actually not on a zero to 100 on these scales. It's actually a zero to 120 and then um, on the X and then zero to 80 on the Y. So midfield is actually at 60-40 instead of 50-50, just so you're aware. But that really is the basics of using the Stats Bomb API to get the data. You can do a lot of different things, such as you could essentially set it up so you're looping. If you wanted like all the passes that, um, for example, Argentina made, 
in the World Cup or if you want to look at like Croatia or something, then you could filter out all the match IDs and then loop over all the match IDs for the Croatia matches and then essentially just do this for Croatia and it would be able and then you would be able to look at all the passes or something or all the shots that Croatia took in the World Cup. Just a hypothetical, but there's a lot of cool things that you can do with this data. It's actually some really great open data. And it's something that I recommend everybody kind of get their hands dirty with because being able to use this data is kind of the beginning of soccer analytics and kind of really what you should be able to know how to use and do once if you have any sort of desire to kind of work in soccer analytics in the future. So anyways, that is it for this video. If you have any more questions about using the API or kind of doing stuff with the API, then let me know. You can hit me up on Twitter. And if you like this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. But that's it for this one. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you in the next one.